We've all been feeling the impact of inflation recently, and in today's video, we want to discuss how it impacts on us mushroom growers specifically, and we'll also share some ways to reduce the impact. So right now, all over the world, people are facing huge levels of inflation. Here in the UK, it pretty much stands at 10%, 9.9 or so, and that's the highest it's been in 40 years. I'm sure you've noticed it where you are. You walk into the shop, you buy a pack of pasta, and prices have gone up a lot. And that's how you measure inflation, of course. The same basket of goods is more expensive than it has been some time ago. Now, it's not just food, it's also energy. So across the EU, energy has recently risen by about 50%. And all of these things matter, of course, to whatever you do in your daily life. So that graph shows you it's gone up 50% across the EU in just the last year. And here in the UK, it's even higher than that. Even after the government's cap on energy, it's gone up by 70%. And it's looking the same across the board, right? The US, Australia, we're all in this together. And some countries are even worse off than those countries I just mentioned. And if you're wondering if this is a short-lived thing, well, it doesn't look like it. If you look at the PPI, which is the producer's price index, an index that tracks the cost of manufacturing anything, well, that stands even higher at 20%. So it looks like it's around for some time to come. So what does all this mean for mushroom growers? Well, like any other type of food production, mushroom growing does use energy to produce. And it also is affected by the materials that we use, the main input. So for example, something like wood pellets, which a lot of growers use as the bulk of their substrate. Uh, the price of wood pellets has gone up by about 50% over the last 12 months. And we've already started to hear from a small handful of other mushroom growers who are saying that they're gonna stop production at this point in time because their costs are just getting too high. But how do you know if things are getting too expensive for you or not? Well, a lot of people don't measure the energy use on their farm. So we're gonna break this down for you a little bit and just give you some idea of the main uses of energy in a mushroom growing operation. So I'll start with the few aspects which probably use the most energy of all. So I've already mentioned wood pellets, but any of your substrate materials require a lot of energy in the manufacture or production of them and also transporting them to you. And like I mentioned already, they're impacted by some of these other factors. Things like fertilizer use, for example, can have a knock-on effect. If you're using agricultural byproducts, straw, for example, becomes more expensive as well. Uh, so that's one area that you can have inflation of your costs. When we're looking more directly at energy use on a farm, one of the main areas that you're going to be using a lot of energy is sterilization or the pasteurization of your substrate. So this is an area where a lot of different production methods can vary quite a lot. For example, pasteurization, uh, either with steam or hot water, you know, possibly even a lime bath method like we like to use, that's likely to have a lower energy cost than something like sterilization. If you're pasteurizing or super pasteurizing in an atmospheric uh, barrel, for example, and you're using a heating element to heat the water, and you're running that for you know maybe 16 or 18 hours, that has a fairly high energy use attached to it. And so that's another area where you're gonna be using a fair amount of energy. Also, just creating the right environment in your growing rooms. For example, maybe you've got air conditioners in your incubation space, just trying to keep that nice stable temperature throughout the incubation. And even more so, when you're trying to create the right temperature in your fruiting room, because the fruiting room has a lot of air exchanges, if your outside temperature is either very hot or very cold, then you might well be using a lot of energy in order to change that temperature in the fruiting room to the ideal zone for your mushrooms to perform well. So those are the main areas that are using the most energy in your farm. And then there's a whole bunch of other factors which also require energy, but maybe at a lesser degree. Fans, lights, humidification, that generally doesn't use as much energy, but of course it all adds up. There's also perhaps the use of an office and a computer and of course the transport of your produce to its final destination. All of these things also are using energy but to a lesser degree. And one other important one I forgot to mention a second ago is refrigeration. That can actually uh, use quite a lot of energy just to refrigerate and keep your fresh mushrooms and your spawn down at a nice low temperature. Uh, depending on your outside climate that can use quite a bit of energy as well. But of course unless you're measuring all of this how do you know how much energy it's actually using? We're going to come back and talk about that in just a minute. So we thought it'd be helpful to break this down a little bit for you. So we looked at our own data and we looked at a number of studies and the first thing to say is that there's a huge range when it comes to looking at the energy involved in mushroom production. I want to impress on you that it's the best thing you can do is to measure it for yourself and we'll come back to how you can do that later on. Now let's look at some of the data we found. So the energy required in mushroom production ranges from 1 to 5 
kilowatt hours per kilogram of mushrooms. And this depends on the scale of the operation with larger farms simply being more effective and more efficient in the use of energy. So here in the UK, with the energy cap in place, the energy cost is 34 pence per kilowatt hour, which means that that range of production cost is 34 pence up to £1.70 per kilogram of mushrooms. And if you're wondering what this means in your country specifically, you can still take that range of one to five kilowatts per kilogram of mushrooms grown, of course, simply multiplied by the cost of a kilowatt unit of energy in your country. And then obviously, if you want it in pounds, then you can use an online calculator too. So one of the key takeaways here is how much these estimates can actually vary. And there's a few good reasons for this. So it depends on what type of mushrooms you choose to grow, but also which production methods you use. So for example, some mushroom types, uh, species like shiitake will take longer in incubation and therefore will need more energy use than oyster mushroom. The, when it comes to the production method, again, when you use a lime bath to pasteurize your substrate, that will be way less energy intensive than, for instance, using an autoclave. So the next important factor then is, of course, the environment in which you have to grow. So it very much depends on the outside temperatures and how they impact on your fruiting room. So for instance, your fruiting room could be a shipping container in the blazing sun, or it could be dug into the soil, and that would buffer the temperature zones. So all of this impacts on these ranges. And the final factor then, it varies on the methodology used to calculate these estimates, to come up with this range. So for instance, some studies will look at it, the whole process from start to finish. So what energy is involved in producing the substrate as well as fruiting, but other studies focus on farms which would buy in their substrate and only measure the part involved in fruiting the mushrooms. So now we understand how much energy is used in mushroom production, what it's used for, and how it can vary uh, depending on the different ways of growing mushrooms. The question is, what impact does this inflation have? Well, before this huge jump in inflation, energy costs used to make up for most mushroom farms between 5 and 15% of their overall costs on the farm. Now, if you are a small scale mushroom grower, let's assume you're going to be at the higher end of the amount of energy used per kilogram of mushrooms produced. And if you remember earlier on in this video, we said that the upper end of that might be five kilowatt hours of energy to produce each one kilogram of mushrooms. Here in the UK, that would have used to have cost you around about one English pound to produce one kilogram of mushrooms. So that's the energy cost to produce each kilo of mushrooms. Now that's going to cost you £1.70 for each kilogram of mushrooms. So that 70% increase in the cost of energy is having a direct impact on the cost of your production and quite a big one as well. Don't forget, of course, that you'll also be seeing other costs going up at the same time. The price of your substrate will likely be going up and you might have other bills and overheads going up at the same time as well, which can obviously impact on things further. So a lot of this, of course, is outside of our control, but there is a lot of stuff we can also do to try and reduce the impact. And I'm going to share some of those things with you now. So the first one really is just to take a baseline measurement of how much energy you're using on your farm maybe even break it down by what areas are using the most energy so the simplest way you could go about doing this you could just have a look at your energy meter and you know measure it from one day to the next or one week to the next and just you know note how many kilowatt hours of energy are going along on that meter so you've just got an idea of how many kilowatt hours you're using per week or per day that's Going to give you a crude measure across the whole of your farm if you just look at your energy meter that you use to pay your bills. Now if you want to break it down more than that then you can use these plugs which you can plug into the wall and then you plug any appliances that you're running into that meter it's going to then calculate and and log how many units of energy are going through that plug and that's going to be able to give you some idea of for example you know an ac unit how much energy is that using a fan how much is that using perhaps you can plug your fridge in like that as well that will enable you to break down where the energy is being used on your farm and give you some ideas about maybe areas that you might want to cut out or reduce the usage of maybe you start questioning do i really need a fridge as big as this or do i really need to run my fruiting room at such a high temperature, maybe I can fruit a little bit lower. Those kind of things will help you to get an idea of where you could start making savings. The second thing you can do is just start really paying attention about reducing the losses on your farm. Since the cost of producing every unit has gone up, you can have a big impact actually just by reducing the losses on your farm. And this kind of thing can have a compounding effect. So what might seem like small changes, these things can add up and have a much bigger impact overall. For example, something like just being really, really attentive to the cleanliness on your farm, making 
making sure you're following all of the cleaning protocol that you know you should be doing. Don't try and cut corners because those corners can be very expensive if things go wrong and you lose a whole batch or even a few bags in a batch, you know, that kind of thing can have a material impact. Also, just checking that your substrate is really clean. I mean, we've heard from people who later found out that perhaps some of their substrate that they were sterilizing was already moldy before they were putting it in and they were losing a lot of their batches to that. So just being really mindful of what you're doing and making sure you really cut out any of the simple mistakes that people do often make. And likewise with wastage, there's no point growing all these mushrooms and all the energy and cost that goes into it if you don't sell them at the end of that process. So perhaps you consider doing a grow to order kind of scheme where you only grow what you know you're going to sell or what people are already committing to. That's going to cut out some of the wastage and some of that cost that would be wasted with it. The third thing you could do is just try to increase your yields. Now I know everyone's always trying to increase their yields, but perhaps you pay more attention to it now or perhaps you take choices you wouldn't have taken previously when you thought maybe it was going to be more expensive to add that extra bit of supplementation well maybe now you really need to boost your yields and really get the best yield you can given that you've got this increased energy cost that energy cost is kind of fixed really depend you know to a large degree it's not going to directly impact on your yield so you may as well just try and get the most yield you can from that baseline energy cost so for example adding additional supplementation or maybe choosing different ingredients for your substrate that may be slightly more expensive but may also give you a greater yield as well that could well be worth considering and the final two points i want to give to you here are the sorts of things we like to talk about often when we focus on low-tech mushroom growing and the whole point of low-tech mushroom growing to a large degree is to reduce the energy input into the whole system so one of the things that we often talk about is considering seasonal mushroom production especially if you're located in a part of the world that sees dramatic swings of temperature so you know for example if you're in the Antarctic growing mushrooms there is going to be much more energy intensive you're going to have to spend a lot more energy input in order just to get the right temperature and likewise if you're in a very hot environment you're going to have to spend a lot more energy just cooling the air in all of your rooms and that's going to be something where you might want to consider in the hottest parts of the year perhaps you're not going to produce in those parts of the year because you know the cost of production during that phase of the year is going to be much higher so perhaps you just choose to produce you know in the shoulder seasons where you know that the temperature is going to be lower maybe winter spring and autumn it's going to be viable whereas in the peak of summer it's not so that's another area that you can consider alongside just choosing the strains you grow and matching them to the season that you're in so you can choose winter varieties to grow in the winter that will allow you to run your grow room at a lower temperature and likewise in the summer there are some warmer weather varieties that will enable you to reduce the cost of cooling the environment by just running your fruit room at a higher temperature finally then the other thing you might want to consider is your production method itself so we mentioned earlier that sterilization of substrates is one of the areas that can use a lot of energy on your farm there are ways of sterilizing or pasteurizing substrate that are much lower energy input. For example, the lime bath method that we like to use here on our farm doesn't really require all that much energy at all. You don't have to heat up the water. You're just simply soaking in cold water lime bath with a high pH level. That is what's pasteurizing your substrate. And so the cost of producing that is gonna be lower than when you're heat sterilizing your substrate. So just looking at figures where we've discussed with other growers, we know that this method of growing is around about 30% cheaper than if you're sterilizing your substrate. So you know that's another area you might want to consider and if you're thinking oh well i want to grow a wide range of mushrooms well that's fine maybe you choose to just grow oyster mushrooms and a range of oysters in a low-tech way and then you might choose to grow other varieties using the normal sterile method either way it's still going to reduce your overall cost of production for your mushrooms so that's something to consider as well so that lime bath method that I'm talking about is just one of a few different low-tech ways you can pasteurize. And we've made another video on that that I recommend checking out. Five low-tech ways of pasteurizing your substrate. Do check that out for some more ideas on that. Thanks a lot for joining us today. I hope you found this useful. Do drop a comment underneath and let us know what your experience of this situation is. And we'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.